Hey guys, welcome back to Kristen Live Acres. In today's video, I'm going to go over what you need to plant to make a survival garden where you can eat what you grow when there is nothing else available, which we all know in today's world, that's a very sincere consideration of what could come to be very shortly. All right, let's do this. In today's video, we're going to discuss the most nutrient and calorically dense vegetables that you need to plant to start a survival garden today. Somebody wanted to join me in the video, so we'll see how that goes. Um, number one is beans. Depending on the climate, and the growing environment that you live in, uh, you want to choose between a pole bean and a bush bean. Bush beans are faster growing, however, pole beans can be put um, on some kind of trellis and start to grow up, um, which is really handy because not only are they calorically dense and full of nutrients and vitamins, but they go really good with number two. Number two is corn. And corn shoots up and has very tall stalks. However, it's got a very shallow root base. So if you choose to grow pole beans, the corn you can actually use as the trellis. They're both shallow rooted plants and so it's kind of the perfect combination. Um, corn is also frequently grown in the sweet corn variety, which is delicious. However, if you're focusing on survival food, you want to pick a more dense variety of corn. Something that you can get down to like 15 to 10% moisture content. That way you can dehydrate it and make yourself some kind of um, cornmeal. Um, it's going to be easier to store that way and give you a much wider variety of ways to use it. And number three, which is kind of the, as they call it, the trio of vegetables that are all grown well together and also between the protein, carbohydrates, nutrients, and caloric um, availability they're probably the top three to start with, and that would be squash. Squash is one of the easiest vegetables to grow, and it has the longest shelf life. You can really store it for quite some time without having to do any work, you, without dehydrating it, without canning it, without drying it, you know, it, it's, it's so shelf stable. And squash is a sprawling crop. So if you have started with your pole beans and they're growing up the stalk of your corn, the squash is a low lying, almost um, like a ground cover to keep moisture in the soil, which corn and beans need proper, almost uh, a continuous proper output of moisture. Whereas some crops can get watered really well, say once a week or once every two weeks and they're good. These really need a proper continuous moisture level. And depending on where you live, again, um, that can vary. If the sun is shining right on those in the hottest part of the day, they're going to lose their moisture, and they won't they won't grow consistently enough for you to eat off of as a food source. So that's why these this is like the best trio in the vegetable gardening world. You've got your beans that will trellis up onto your corn, both shallow rooted. And then you've got your squash, which will be ground cover, which will shade 
the soil beneath all of it to maintain the proper moisture level. Number four, cabbage. The number one thing about cabbage is you can ferment it. So you can make so many different things with it. It just provides you with a valuable source of many ways to make many different things. Because if you're living off of eight, nine, ten different vegetable crops, you're going to get tired. There is something that's food fatigue. And you might think, well, I'm starving. I'm going to eat it. Yes, you will eat it. But it's going to become not appetizing at some point. And so if you have a variety of foods that can be stored in different ways, dried in the sun, dehydrated, canned, um, fermented, pickled, kind of the same thing, uh, that gives you a variety of flavors to work with. And that's really important when you're working with a small amount of foods when you're trying to survive off what you can grow. Uh, cabbage is also high in nutrients and it gives you another flavor palette as well as the crispiness. Texture is important when you don't have a lot to work with and you'd be amazed how many amazing dishes you can make with just these items on this list and having a little crunch makes a big difference. Number five, kale. Kale is so super high in nutrients, minerals, it's high in caloric value, and it's one of the easiest vegetables to grow. You can grow it in winter and or summer, depending on the variety you pick, and the variety you choose really just needs to be what is in the best interest of your growing season and your environment, depending on what zone you're in. Number six, and this is really no means in any specific order, however, um, potatoes, some may think need to be higher up on the list. They are highly caloric, and essentially, if you had to, you could live off of just potatoes and not be insufficient in any particular nutrient, vitamin, mineral. You won't be thriving, but you will be surviving. There are many different varieties of potatoes. Red potatoes seem to have a little bit more of the essential nutrients that you need. However, whatever grows best in your climate is what you need to grow. And as long as you don't harvest 100% of them every year and every time that you grow, they will come back continually for years and years. So that's, that's something you can plant once, and if you're very careful, will bring you crops annually without much work. Number seven, sweet potatoes. Even though a sweet potato sounds like it would be in the same family as a potato, it is not. A sweet potato is high in vitamin C, magnesium, a lot of the vitamins and nutrients that we need on a daily basis to survive. And when you're not getting that from other sources, the sweet potato is a great way to get it. They do grow a little bit slower than your regular potato, whether it's a, you know, a, a russet or a red. However, the weight is worth the weight literally the weight in the weight when it comes to the value you get for nutrients in your body. Um, they have a high sugar content, which is great for mixing with other things to add flavor when maybe you're lacking some flavor and other things. And because of that sugar content, you're also going to get, uh, the ability to level out your blood sugar throughout the day. Number eight, lentils. Lentils are great because they're kind of one of those, they're valuable in calories, they have nutrients, they have minerals, and they can be dried. And what you need to remember when you're 
making a garden for survival is not just what you can grow and eat right then, but what you can grow and preserve even if it's for 30 days or 90 days. Because you're not, depending on where you live and your, your climate, you're not going to be able to grow everything 12 months out of the year. So having the ability to grow, say, red potatoes or russet potatoes on a quicker scale, the sweet potatoes will take longer. However, you're going to be able to save them and, and do many other things with them in the future. They have much more shelf stable life. And number nine is herbs. I have found, and I am in um, zone 9B, I'm in northwestern Florida, and there are many, many, many herbs that are pretty much like plant and leave it alone. I have amazing amounts of rosemary, basil, thyme, dill, lavender, I mean, you name it. Um, and it's just one of those set it and forget it. You plant it as long as it has some water and sunshine. It just continues to grow and you just can clip a little bit off as you need it. And again, when you're having, you know, one of those moments where you're just so tired of the same taste over and over a variety of herbs which are extremely inexpensive to purchase as a seed or however you get them um the the food fatigue is a real thing and if you can plant some herbs to help spice and flavor the items that you're cooking it's going to be a game changer so I will leave you guys with that. I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, I hope that you'll subscribe, hit the like button, and of course, the bell notification, and click all so you don't miss any more of my future uploads. Thanks so much, guys. See you.